Amazing things happen to cities at night. Even in old cities like Edinburgh, the usually golden colours of the historic buildings are replaced by dark tones of steely blue. Lights unseen in the daytime suddenly spring into life, coating the streets in vibrant hues and picking out shapes from the darkness. The people too are a different crowd. Workers and shoppers are absent here, replaced instead with nighttime revelers, groups of friends or simply individuals trying to make their way back to the comfort of home. The city is a different beast at night, full of lights, of life and of intrigue. It's a twilight playground for street photographers and in today's video I'm venturing into the heart of Edinburgh to share my advice on how I capture nighttime images just like these. I started my journey on the bus, where even there I'm treated to a neon light show, both from the lighting inside and the shop fronts I pass by. My first tip though, go where the action is. While so much of Edinburgh looks amazing at any time of day, I'm particularly looking for people, for crowds and for activity to capture in my street images and try to tell the story of the city at night. So that naturally means sticking around town centres where more people are likely to be. And for me, that was Princess Street, the heart of Edinburgh and a perpetually busy hotspot for tourists and locals alike. Immediately I was struck by the crowds on this crossing and used a longer exposure to blur the motion of the figures to try and capture that sense of motion. Wandering up and down the main street, I tried to keep my eyes open as I was passing by, looking for figures in windows, or waiting at bus stops, or simply passing by on a tram. And while Princess Street is full of shop windows with lights illuminating the walkways in front, it's not always those spots that are the best opportunities for photos. Which brings me to my next point. Look for the light. Much of this is down to what you want from your own images, but I'm always drawn to quite low-key, minimalist images with single lighting. That means looking away from gigantic LED-strewn windows or advertising signs and instead looking towards smaller light sources that can create a more artistic look. Edinburgh actually makes this quite easy. These old-fashioned street lamps provide beautiful pools of light that cascade down to the figures underneath. I love this dark shot of this family, their forms only faintly picked out by the light above. While this street lamp casts just enough light to perfectly illuminate this figure passing by. There are lights everywhere in a city at night, whether it's from shop fronts like this, headlights backlighting figures crossing a street, or a single light on a bridge that let me neatly pick this figure out as they walked across. I love that this overhead light has carved a beautiful edge light around the figure while casting a perfect shadow behind. I tried a similar shot using a longer exposure to blur the motion along with a lurid neon color version, but I don't like either as much as I like the original black and white version but maybe you could let me know which you prefer in the comments. But this figure brings me on to my next point. Wait for your moment. Even though there's life and activity going on at every turn in a city like Edinburgh, it's still important to wait for the right moment in your images. A few steps back and this figure would have been in darkness, so I had to wait for the perfect opportunity to push the shutter button. In a nearby part of town, I found this scene and took a shot that I actually really like. 
It's just a couple of portaloos outside of a house, but there's something about the lighting and the gentle tones to it that I really like. But I felt that there might be a human element missing here. So I stood essentially in the middle of the road for almost 10 minutes, waiting for someone to pass by so I can take my shot right as they step into the middle of the scene. I really like the result and I'm glad that I was patient here. Although I'm actually not sure whether I prefer it with the figure or without. Again, maybe you could let me know which you prefer in the comments. I employed a similar tactic when I found this scene with these grand columns and twin lamps. The perfect symmetry of the scene was crying out for a figure walking right through the middle. So again, I had to be patient, trying several times with different people as they passed by. Some shots, they weren't dead center. Some, I didn't like the position of the legs while others came through in groups. But with patience, I got two shots with a single figure exactly how I wanted them. And when I tried this before and there was no one around, I simply used the self timer on a tripod and put myself into the scene. These shots are more planned though. They require me to find my composition first and then wait for someone to enter the scene, just like I did with these shots. But as with all street photography, you need to be ready to react. Most of my images are not planned in the same way. They're taken quickly once I recognize a moment and I bring my camera up to try and capture it before that moment slips away. These figures looking for directions were there for just a brief moment. And there was a split second opportunity in this image to capture this woman looking out through a streaky bus stop window as two foreground figures created a natural frame in my image. These moments are fleeting so they require quick reactions, but also an alertness to be able to spot a scene as you might be walking by. I like spotting this couple with their fish and chips and this person having a drag on their cigarette, which I shot from the bus window as I passed by. While some of that reaction will come from learning how to spot scenes you want to photograph, a lot of it will come down to how quickly you can operate your camera. I shot in manual mode on my R5, wide open to let as much light in as I can, a high ISO speed, and usually a minimum of around 80th of a second for my shutter speed. My new 50mm Zeiss lens is manual focus, and that's taking some getting used to, and I have missed a few shots. But hopefully, I'll get used to it. But while you're playing with your settings, try using long exposures in your city photography. I've been experimenting more with long exposures to get shots of car headlights streaking through the city at night and I do love the effect that it gives. It adds a great sense of motion and life to an otherwise static scene, while the vibrant colors and wavy lines of the headlights add a dreamy, ethereal quality. Some of these shots were taken over several seconds using a tripod, while this one was just half a second handheld providing just enough motion blur to the car and the walking figure to nicely contrast the static nature of the person waiting to cross the road. With these long exposures, composition is key. So I've looked for shots like this with the twin lines of lights streaking either side of the walkway. And this scene with the bold colors of a street light in the foreground and the classical dome in the background but I try to add some life to other scenes as well, especially in this scene of people waiting at the bus stop that combines both static figures and the motion blur from the bus and a passerby. While this image contrasts the relatively still couple on the bench with the vibrant streaking lights of a passing bus. My favorite though is this shot showing a grand view of the Scott Monument with streaking lights passing below from the busy buses and cars on Princess Street. But that brings me to an end of today's video. I really hope you've enjoyed my thoughts on nighttime street photography, and I hope it's given some of you some inspiration to get out and take shots of your own. If you do, please make sure to share them with me on Instagram with at batteryhq. But if you've enjoyed this video, do please hit that like button, consider subscribing if you don't already, and I will see you next time.